Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Chalk Talk here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Steelers YouTube channel and DKPittsburghSports.com. Patrick Queen, his best game as a Steeler? I I do think so. 13 tackles, one TFL. I thought it was a great game for him. Wasn't, you know, didn't overtake the game. You know, TJ Watt did that with, the, with his two forced fumbles that one of them definitely helped save a score and um, but still, a, a great job by Patrick Queen in this game. I thought it was a really good game for him. I've got eight plays uh, drawn up here that really kind of highlighted his day. Not all great stuff here, but I, I thought was indicative of the type of game that he played and also kind of showed why sometimes things will kind of break down for him, but also you know, put a play in here that you know kind of shows the kind of communicator that he is, the way he communicates Well, more, you know, like sometimes before a play, sometimes after a play. So we'll see here. This first play here, look at it. Queen is uh, going to go up. He's going to rush, but he recognizes screen. And he goes over, and there's the TFL. Great job. The Queen right here. He is going to be going up. He's going to, you know, go up and, and, and rush. But. I think his ultimate responsibility is now, again, I haven't talked with, with Patrick about this play, but I think his ultimate responsibility is the running back here. But you can kind of see as the play develops here, as he goes up, he's keeping his eyes up. He notices right away that the running back is leaking out. He sees that this lineman's going out for a block. This lineman's about to go out for a block. Oh, okay, this is a screen, and... Just watch him use his speed to get over there and just make a great play. That's the that's the kind of stuff that you expect to see from Patrick Queen. You know, using his ability to recognize a play and then react. He's got the game speed. Um, he's got a high football IQ. He can see this stuff, and, then, and when he can react, use his speed, this guy right here has that great ability too. He knows how to react to stuff, and he has incredible speed in order to react to help, you know, jump up and make plays, whether it's, you know, stepping in front of a pass or tackles or anything like that. Patrick Queen has that same ability, and you really saw it on that play. Next play here. I'm trying to remember each play. Let's see what the Raiders do here. Oh, yeah, this play right here. Okay, so I'm going to let this play, and I want you to watch – I want you to watch Patrick Queen here. Watch him after the the pass is batted down. So he's trying to go to the middle of the field here to the tight end. And I want you to watch six the whole way. Watch his reaction. Now, okay, he, I saw this live. I saw his reaction live. I didn't even see the pass. Now, granted, I'm sitting up in the press box and, the the press box at Allegiant Stadium is the highest press box I've ever been in. I've covered both football and baseball games. I've covered well more than probably 250 baseball games. I've covered, I'm now in my second full season of covering the NFL. I've been in double-digit football stadiums. I've been in double-digit baseball stadiums. By far the highest press box I've ever been in. So I don't see this pass get batted down watching this live. All I'm seeing is Patrick Queen have this reaction right here. And so I'm thinking, did he drop a pick? Or, you know, what, what's going on here? And so obviously I see it on the replay that, you know, Benton knocked it down. And so I go down to the locker room and I see him. And I asked him, I was like, that play in the first quarter, uh, he's trying to hit a tight end over the middle. I think either TJ or Keanu batted it down. Uh, were you going to pick that off? Because you acted like you did. And he's like, yeah, I baited him. And I was like, you baited him. So, of course, as soon as the All-22 comes out, I'm like, all right, I got to see this here. So you can see that Queen, you know, Queen is definitely responsible for, like, this zone right here. And he goes and he sees, okay, you know, quarterback's looking that way, so he starts to kind of drift back in this direction. But then immediately... Okay, quarterback is now looking in that direction right now. Now watch Queen. Now Queen sees that. He recognizes it. And so he kind of stops and he, watch him get low. He gets low right there. Watch him kind of dip down. And then even as the quarterback's throwing, he's not running over yet. 
So this quarterback right here, as he's looking and throwing, now granted, I'm, we're seeing this in slow motion, but he is seeing a window right here. What he doesn't see is that Queen is absolutely looking at him, and he is about to dart straight in front of this thing. And he is breaking on that. Now, when you see, okay, Paul, you know, pass gets batted down there, and you're still still seeing like this separation right here. But watch this in 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 like real time, and you tell me if you think that Queen's going to get there in time. It looks like it to me. He might be getting there a hair late, but man, he would have had a real opportunity to pick that off. And I'm just looking at this. I am not seeing a lot of people between. Now, I'm not saying he would have gotten there, but he would have had some running room if he would have if that pass didn't get batted down. Of course, if the if a lineman has an opportunity to bat a pass down, you bat, you bat the pass down. Um, but I thought that that was really interesting watching. And so, of, of course, after having that interaction with him, I wanted to go back and watch this. It's cool to watch it play out. So, yeah, I thought that was really cool. All right, next play here. Kind of see some some communication here before. Making sure everybody's lined up. He's communicating. And you'll see it better from the end zone angle. But, you know, Queen navigates his way through the blocking. Helps get back there. Obviously, TJ makes the play, and then Queen's there to help you know, drive the nail into the coffin. But you could see him communicate with both, you know, Landon Roberts, you know, guy moves in motion. You know, he's, you know, telling the Landon, okay, shift over. He's telling the lineman shift over. He's, you know, lining up Deshaun Elliott. And you can see, like, okay, this is definitely uh, an outside zone or a wide zone of some kind, definitely an outside zone concept. And, you know, Queen is, you know, he's got the, the left guard taking him on. And he does a really good job of bouncing off that block. Now, granted, I'm mean, again just Cam Hayward, man. My God, Cam Hayward. <laughs> and Montrevious Adams help help make that help make that too. I remember seeing this live too. Montrevious Adams here in the middle. He does a great job of just shoving his dude backward. And I mean, you got both Cam Hayward and, and and Mon who won, but then Queen really, you know, he gets off of this block and he's able to kind of navigate his way through this and help, like I said, drive the nail in the coffin on this because you know TJ ends up getting there and then Queen makes sure he doesn't get away. They get the TFL. TJ will get the credit for it and deserves the credit for it, but Queen does a good job of again you. One thing we weren't seeing a few, you know, I would say a little bit too often in the first few games of the season is that he wasn't getting off blocks nearly enough, and we definitely saw that in this game. Now, granted, this is this is the Las Vegas. I was about to call them the Oakland Raiders. This is the Las Vegas Raiders. They're not a good football team. They're not a well coached team. Uh, it's just it's not a good football team. So we're trying to take that into account when we analyze the film, when we analyze the game, but. These are still NFL players here. He's getting off blocks. This is a good this was a good game for Patrick Queen. Next play. Let's see what we got here. Dropping back. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. So, you know, they get a completion here and you can see Queen communicating after the play. And he's definitely motioning. It looks like he's motioning to uh Jeremiah Moon here. And he is saying okay come on come on you got to you got to okay so let's let's break this down here let's see what what it looks like the Steelers should be running here so they are showing some sort of it looks like they're showing cover 1 cuz it looks like that it's just Minka back here going to take this one zone over the top maybe maybe they're showing cover 3 you know maybe this could be okay cover 3 Maybe. But what this ends up being, as you you know go through, is now, okay, it's a two high shell. You got the two safeties back here. They've got, you know, these areas. And based off of what ends up playing out, it looks like you've got a zone here, a zone here, a zone here, a zone here, and a zone here. 
and it looks like again this is what it looks like i haven't i wanted to you know today's wednesday i wanted to try to talk with patrick today uh he wasn't in the locker room either before practice after practice so these are the type of plays that i want to try to talk with players about because i want to see their perspective on this but it looks like they're running this cover two zone where this guy's got this zone this guy's got this zone queen would have this zone uh Porter would actually have this zone down here because corners usually take the flat and then moon would drop back into this zone. That's what it looks like is going to happen here. And again, I'm also trying to base off of what I'm seeing on film because as this plays out, I mean, again, if you break, were to break this down, you got those five zones. Now you've got a guy here. In that zone, you got a guy here in this zone. Queen is in his in is in his zone. There is nobody in that zone right there. And you've got two guys right on top of each other. Something happened there. That's a communication. That's a, a busted coverage. And I think that's why you see Queen shading more over here instead of getting back and playing in his zone back here. Because this window is now wide open because somebody's not there. And lo and behold, completion. Easy completion. And that's why I'm saying, like, when I see Queen doing this, I'm thinking he's telling Jeremiah Moon, no, you need to be in your zone. You need to be stay stay inside Porter's. You know, Porter's going to have the flat. you got to stay on the inside there. So here's from the end zone angle. This just goes to show, you know, again, you know, Queen letting guys know, okay, this is what needs to happen. And that's just that's an easy pitch and catch. And two guys, especially if this if this is just five zones across, you know, or some sort of like three zones in the middle and then the, the corners have the two flats, you know, whatever version of cover two this is, I'm not gonna sit here and try to pretend what it is, because I don't know. I'm I'm not in the room. I'm not gonna pretend to know what they're what they're what they're calling here. You can see that something had to be done here. Somebody is not in that window, and it looks like he's talking with Moon that he needed to be in there. Next play. This is a really great play from Peyton Wilson, and I, I should note on here, you know, I understand this is a Patrick Queen uh, film, but Peyton Wilson had a good game, and I thought his game got better as the game went along. He does a great job of navigating, getting off of a block, getting making a tackle, and again, Patrick Queen there to help drive the nail in the coffin. But I thought this was a great job by Peyton Wilson because, you know, the the Raiders are running a counter here. You've got uh or not a counter, but a, a power of some kind. You got two guys pulling and you can see here, you know, w Wilson does a good job of navigating and, you know, the tight end is trying to come here and, and to block uh block block down on Wilson. And then you can see that uh, 58 here is going to be responsible to go get Queen. And just watch Wilson there. Like, boom. He just shoulders off the tight end, doesn't let him block him. And he just gets right through there. And then Queen does a good job. Again, you know, he's engaged in a block. He gets off of it, and he's right there to help, you know, again, clean up the trash. You use a good old hockey term there. Good play from both linebackers on that. Next play, uh, this is what I think it is. I think this is the screen. This is the type of play that you're going to see Queen take risks, and it does get him out of position at times. Now, again, I am not going I'm, – I'm, I'm going to keep saying it because it's true, and I want to really emphasize it. I'm not in the room. I don't know how they're coaching this. However, I will say, based off of what I've seen of Patrick Queen – on film in like because obviously whenever the Steelers signed him, you know, I went back and I watched, you know, watched his film. And one thing that I noticed he did was sometimes he would take alternate routes to get where he wanted to go. It's it's what playmakers do. They take chances and sometimes they pay off and sometimes they don't. When you take chances like that, you lose gap integrity, you leave some areas open, but sometimes if you do it, it ends up paying off. He did it against the Steelers a few different times last year. 
This is what playmakers do. You know, Max Crosby, watching this game back, when I watched the offensive side of the ball, Max Crosby did this a few times, and it burned the Raiders a few times. And I don't think anybody's going to argue with Max Crosby and his and his talent and his ability. But you definitely, definitely see this happen here. So I play this out. They're going to run a screen here. I believe the center and the guard are both going to go out and block. Yeah, the center and the guard, you know, so guard's coming out, and he's going to go block out there. The center's going to go out there, and he's going to help set up a block. And you can see Queen, you know, he notices this. He recognizes this, and he's thinking, I can just go right around. And, and right here, like right here, he's like, man, I could just cut, turn up field, and bam, the, the running back's right there. Instead, he should probably stay home somewhere in this area here, try to get off the block, or force the running back to either go to, to cut back inside. Again, anytime that offenses are trying to stretch out here, players need to try to force guys back inside because you got big guys who are eventually going to win their blocks. You got you know these guys in here that are eventually going to win their blocks, and so that's where you want to force the play back to. But Queen is going to try to take this route outside, and it obviously doesn't pay it off. You know, the, the lineman takes advantage of the fact that he's got the inside leverage and he just shoves him out of the way. Queen can't get there. He noticed he note now granted he notices he can't get there, so he's already turning upfield, being like, crap, I gotta I gotta be back here, I gotta help out. He can't get off the block because the the lineman has the leverage. It's just these are these are chances that he's gonna take. And it's it's gonna come with the territory. It, at times it's gonna make him look look like, oh man, he 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 made a bad play there. It comes with the territory when you have the, these type of players. Uh, this is the T.J. Watt uh, forced fumble here on the goal line. Phenomenal play by T.J. T.J. is playing. I mean, this is the best defensive player on the planet. I think he should be in the MVP discussion too. But I would be remiss to not give two players their flowers on this play, and that is these two gentlemen right here, Patrick Queen and Larry Ogunjobi. The push that Larry gets on... The guard here is just phenomenal, and Queen definitely pounces on that because what he's going to do is he's going to help shove in this direction and then try to bounce off of that and make a play and make a tackle for a loss here. And he nearly does, and he told me after the game, he was like, I really wanted that tackle, but TJ got the punch out, and I'm not upset about it at all. <laughs> you watch this play out. Just watch the push that Larry gets. I mean, that is awesome stuff and then queen helps get that he helps shoot that and then he's trying to peel off of it and get that tackle but even then like even if you don't make the tackle there you've disrupted the entire run like he can't get there and now you're giving landon roberts an opportunity to go make a tackle you're giving tj watt an opportunity to get off his block and make a play you know, Cam Hayward, may, he may get off his block and get there in time. I mean, you, anytime you can get into the backfield and cause disruptions, you're doing a good thing. And so that's what he does. TJ ends up making the play. Deshaun Elliott, I don't know if he just couldn't get his balance or he was actually trying to be stealthy there. Like, it kind of looks like he just could, didn't get his balance, but it looks like, like, is he trying to be stealthy, just get up and just think he could take off because the Raiders wouldn't notice? Either way, it's funny. <laughs> Great play by a lot of a lot a lot of a lot of guys on that play. Just a great play overall, and obviously TJ just being TJ. Last play here. Wanted to show this is another thing that I think Queen does really well. Uh, he's in man. You know he does a good job of you know standing on the running back, limiting the play here. Um, the one thing that I noticed about Queen, and and this is just from watching the Steelers play the Ravens twice a year every year is that the Ravens really do a good job. And the Steelers do it too, to a certain extent. But the Ravens, I think, are better at it. And that's teaching guys to punch for the ball and make tackles at the same time, not just try to punch the ball out. You see Steelers guys do it too. And so I'm not saying the Steelers don't teach it. They absolutely do teach it. I witness it in practice. But the Ravens, I thought, I think have been better about it. And so this is where it's good to see Queen come onto the onto the black and gold side so that he can start making these type of plays 
Uh, now, granted, he doesn't get the, he doesn't get the the forced fumble here or anything, but you can see the technique that he has. Now, he does a good job of okay sticking with the running back. Running back gets outside, but watch as this is happening here. He is definitely right here. Boom! He is punching for that ball, but not just sacrificing the tackle for the punch. He's making sure that he at bare minimum gets the tackle. But phenomenal job of just oh punch and see so many guys nowadays. They don't like too many running backs, too many receivers. They don't carry the ball on on like on their outside shoulder. You know, they'll just catch and go to whatever like their dominant hand is. So if this play happens on the other sideline and if it's a running back who likes to carry the ball in his right arm, like that might be a forced fumble, you know, if Patrick Queen, you know, does the same thing. So again, just these are the type of things that you like to see, the little tiny details. Like I remember in the preseason, I think it was I think it was Casey, Demonte Casey, who tried to punch the ball out and completely sacrificed like completely ignored the actual tackling portion of it and sold out for the force fumble didn't get the force fumble i think there was a score uh, like a touchdown i think it might might have been the preseason game against the texans but these are the kind of stuff you you like to see go for the go for the splash play try to punch the ball out but at bare minimum make the tackle and this is a tackle in space. The ball's caught at the 42-yard line. He makes the tackle at the 45. Limits the yards after catch when the guy is running away from him and gives himself a chance to try to force a fumble but also makes a tackle and you know limits the limits the game. So, again, I thought this was a great uh, a great game for Patrick Queen. Wasn't, like I said, wasn't groundbreaking by any means whatsoever, but I still thought it was a really solid game for him. Again, 13 tackles. He was all over the place. You don't get 13 tackles without being all over the place. I thought it was a really great game for him. I thought he deserves um, the, the the credit for that. Obviously, you want to see him build off of it, and you want to see him do it against a better opponent. So we'll see what next week has in store when the Steelers host the Jets on Sunday Night Football. That game's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, so hope you enjoyed this. Um Definitely uh, looking forward to next week, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. So, peace out.